Um, hi, um, as we discussed in part one of this video, I am now going to demonstrate the full width effect in a stool state supply chain using a systems dynamics tool. So, um, this is a very simple supply chain. Uh, consumers buy from retailers, so you see there's a consumer demand, they buy from retailers, and retailers place orders on the factory, the factory produces it and ships it to the retailer. And these shipments end up as a stock as a retailer's inventory. So uh, I just want to first, before I go ahead, I just want to uh, say that this model has, uh, has been built using the Benson software. Which, uh, which helps us uh, model business dynamics um, kind of situation. So Vensim is a really powerful tool uh, and I've used it for many years and I strongly recommend if you want to, if you want to use it, right? Um, so I just want to uh, very quickly um, explain that how this model works, right? So everything you see in a box is a stock and everything that goes into the stocks is closed, right? And these are almost like pipes with a, with a little valve here that you can adjust. And uh, this is like uh, this is like a bathtub that I showed you in the part one of the video, right? Uh, and uh, inside this model, uh, there are you know everything has got equations in it. So this is just not a pictorial view. And uh, for example, um, I'll try to show you what the equation inside the retailer's inventory. So I just click on this equation button. And if I click here, um, you know, you you um, uh, a screen pops out, which kind of explains um, you know what the equations are inside. So it's basically an integration of uh, shipments minus sales. It's got an initial value of four thousand units, so four thousand items, right? And uh, that's pretty much everywhere, right? So if you see, uh, for example, if I look at orders. Again, you get a similar situation. So what the order does is the order is it captures the sales data. It sees the target inventory minus the retailer inventory. So target inventory minus retailer inventory divided by the inventory adjustment inventory adjustment period. So what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, as we as we as we spoke about in part one of this video. Uh, you know, the systems dynamics model by its very design captures the internal causal factors going on. So it captures the whole system. And you look, if you look at the external data, the external data is only very few. One is uh, uh, consumer demand. The other is what your target inventory is. Uh, you know, how often do you review your sales? Uh, what is your inventory adjustment period? What's the manufacturing response time? You can very clearly tell that this is, um, uh, you know, this is very basic data that you need to run this model. And comes to the earlier point that systems dynamics models are not very data intensive because it captures the internal causal structure, right? So, uh, uh, you know, this is not a lecture about, uh, this is not a talk about, you know, how do you model? Uh, how do you model? Uh, you know, uh, how do you use modeling in Benson? Uh, if you go to Benson website, they've got pretty good uh, sample models that you can use, that you can watch and see and and learn as to how do you model it. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly take you to the uh, to the model output and see what is happening. So I'm going to click this button, which is basically uh, simulates the model, right? And it says, um, uh, you know, data set currently exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Yeah, click on yes. And you can clearly see that there is some dynamic behavior happening. But what I've done here is uh, I have created a kind of a dashboard, kind of a management cockpit, right? That helps you, uh, that helps you understand what's happening, right? I think you might not be able to see the full screen, so let me try to adjust the screen if I can. Uh, okay, uh, well, I have to stop the model here. Okay. 
to kind of make it a little smaller because it's not fitting in the screen. Uh, won't take more than 30 seconds. Just give me 30 seconds. Closer. All right, so you can see that it was very easy to quickly change the situation. It's very flexible. All right, so I think now I think you can see everything is on the same screen. Now um, you, you know this this is the bump in the consumer demand, right? So this bump that you're seeing is the same as what you saw. Uh, in this page, right? There's a little bump in the consumer demand. Okay, so um, uh, you know the it was originally thousand items per week. It suddenly jumped to twelve hundred items per week, and you can see that it takes a very very long time, almost thirty thirty five weeks for the supply chain to stabilize again, right? If I were to reduce this bump to zero. You can see that the supply chain is all dead. I, I wonder if you can see this little blue line here. That's all absolutely flat. There's nothing interesting going on. But as soon as I increase this bump to 200, you can see that uh, a lot of dynamic behavior happens. So this is a pretty simple supply chain, as you described in in uh, in part one of the video, right? Uh, it's just a two-stage supply chain: a manufacturer, a retailer. And even so, a little bump which happens in in uh, uh, week five, you can see that it takes almost 30, 35 weeks for the supply chain to stabilize, right? There's nothing else, just a little bump here. And just imagine if this sales were to be violent swings or even a small twiddle, the kind of dynamic behavior that you will see here is just impossible. Now, if I were to reduce the manufacturing response time, that is the time in which the manufacturer would take to change to the new demand reality. If I were to change this, you see how stable the supply chain becomes, right? So this is the lever that you would like to pull, right? This is the lever that you would like to pull. And if you take it back to one week, right, you see the stable, the instable behavior again, right? Now, if I were to change the uh, inventory adjustment period to a longer period. You see that the supply chain becomes very stable. This is also very counterintuitive. So it kind of tells us that it's not a good idea to adjust your supply chain very often. If you adjust the supply chain more often, you bring in more complexity, kind of self-inflicted wounds. So let the supply chain be a little stable, right? So maybe increase your inventory adjustment period. It kind of stabilizes the supply chain. This is counterintuitive. You might think that if I were to do a daily review, it will stabilize the supply chain. Not necessarily true. Depends on your system, right? And that's what system dynamics is again coming up with. This being, this is the kind of analysis you can never ever understand through linear modeling. You need a systemic modeling. You need a system-based modeling. Now let's say I make it 0.9. You see, the dynamics is completely changed. You completely destabilize the chain. It goes from a stable swing, 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 wild swings, right? Okay, so I bring it back into shape back again, right? And you see, um, uh, and and that's another very very big insight from the supply chain, uh, from this systems dynamics kind of modeling. Okay, the sales review period, the sales review period, right? This review period is to you know how do you capture the sales data? How often do you capture the sales data? That has very little impact for this model. For a simple two-stage supply chain, there's a little movement here, but not significant, as you can see. The production delay has quite a big impact, right? So you don't want to be having production delays because that impacts quite a lot, right? So, um, uh, so the basic summary is that the systems dynamics really helps us capture uh, the dynamics in play, and I really find it very interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I, and I look forward to bringing you something more in the series. Thank you very much.